We're now going to apply our transformations to our exponential decay functions. Um, all of these uh, are related to y equals 1 half to the x. That's the first graph we did, number 1. And remember, just like exponential growth, these exponential decay transformations happen to the point 0, 1, that intercept, and to the asymptote y equals 0. Okay, so when we're moving left, right, up, and down, these are the two things that get affected. So let's take a look at this. Um, on number four, we have one half to the x minus three. That minus three is going to cause this to go down three. So instead of the point zero one, we're gonna go down three. And that's our new point. And asymptote y equals zero is also going to move down three. And there it is. And remember this is exponential decay, so it's coming in like this. If you want, you can plug in some more points to make it, you know, a little bit better, less of a sketch, but this is the general idea that we're going for here. Our domain is all real numbers, and our range is greater than negative three, because remember we moved it down three. All right, our next one has two transformations. This minus one is going to move it right one, and the two is going to move it up two. So we're going to take that point, 0, 1, that intercept. We're going to move it right 1 and up 2. And then we're going to take our asymptote, y equals 0. Now, moving it right 1 doesn't do anything, but moving it up 2 does. And then we'll kind of sketch this in. Again, you can plug in some more points, um, but this is just a general sketch of what it's going to look like. Domain is all real numbers, and our range did change because we shifted it up 2, so we're greater than 2. Now, this last one, it's got some stretching and stuff, so we will want to create a table of values. Um, but the transformation is happening. That negative is going to reflect it across the x-axis. And this 3 is going to be a stretch, steeper, however you want to think of it. Okay. Now, since, since we have a reflection and a stretch, we don't just want to sketch. We're actually going to want to create a table of values for this. So I hope I can do this without it being too messy. All right, so I'm going to plug in my same normal points. Um, so I have negative 3 times 1 half to the negative 2. So it'll be negative 3 times, I don't have a ton of space, so 1 half to the negative 2 power is going to be uh, 4. So this is going to give me negative 12. Here I have negative 3 times 1 half to the negative 1. Flip everything around, it turns out to be 2. So this will be negative 6. Here I have negative 3 times 1 half to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Um, negative 3 times 1 half to the first power is just 3 times 1 half, which is going to be negative 1.5. And we have negative 3 times 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. So negative 3 fourths, negative 0.75. Okay. Just a reminder, you're doing order of operations, so you have to do the exponent first, then multiply by the negative 3. Um, your calculator can also help you if you're having a little trouble with these. Okay, negative 2, negative 12, I cannot fit that on this graph. So negative 1, negative 6, put that in here. 0, negative 3, 1, and negative 1.5. Oops, sorry about that. And 2, negative 0.75, so there it is. Okay, and you can see it's coming up like this. It is going to level off there, and it's going to drop there. Okay, this is still exponential decay, even though it'll get flipped over, um, because we're approaching zero to the right. So it's kind of a weird transformation, but it's still true. Our domain is still all real numbers, and since we flipped the whole thing over, our range is going to be greater than zero. In our last video, we're going to check out how um, exponential decay um, problems work with word problems.